Recently, New York City Schools Chancellor David Banks delivered what he calls his State of Our Schools address. And among his top commitments, making sure every child is a confident reader by third grade. And then laying a foundation that ensures high school graduates are financially literate, prepared for college, and ready to enter the workforce. The big, big goal. So the goal is to boost, of course, reading skills in a system where about half of third to eighth graders are not proficient on state test. Can you imagine? In 2019, 53% of third graders were proficient in reading, this according to the Department of Education. In 2022, reading proficiency for third graders slipped to 42%. If there's anything more than important than this educational process, I don't know what it is for the futures of the kids, for the futures of all of us. Joining us now with much more is Jetta Donovan from the New Teacher Project. Thank you for joining us tonight, Jetta. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So you're not just a person with an opinion. You're going to be doing some of this teaching and coordinating this procedure uh, for the city schools. Tell me what, what's in store for them and what you bring to the table here. Sure. You know, New York City has uh, undertaken a historic investment this year in transforming how students in the city will learn to read. Um, they're not just investing in a new curriculum, an evidence-based curriculum to teach students how to read. They're making a really bold investment in training leaders and teachers. The organization I work for, TNTP, does work across the country supporting large systems that are doing just this, which is making huge investments in um, our educators. And as we think about what lays before New York City, um, making sure that teachers uh, principals, school leaders have the tools and resources they need to not just know the curriculum they're they're using, but make it work for the students in their classrooms will be crucial. So I don't know anything about the organization or or what you're going to do, and, and that's why I'm, we're having you on because it's really important. I think it's more most important thing of all the issues we we're faced with is this is this educating our our future. Um, wh what does it mean? How are teachers going to be? hesitant to listen to what you have to say? They're gonna, will some of them say, hey, I know how to teach my kids how to read? You know, my experience, I've done this work across the country, uh, training teachers around uh, science of reading and evidence-based approaches to literacy. And, you know, my experience more than uh, not has been teachers who say, I wish I knew this sooner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish I had this information for last year students or the students I've had previously. And, you know, there's a message that we often use with teachers, which is know better, do better. When we have the information we need, we do better for our students. And I think many educators in New York City are on the precipice of that change this year and excited to undertake it. OK, let's get into the nuts and bolts of all, all of this. Um, how bad is the current situation? I mean, you shared some New York City yep. specific statistics to start. Um, the NAEP scores, uh, uh, the national reading statistics from the previous year are even more bleak than that. I mean, they're an injustice really for students. 32% of readers um, on the NAEP scores last year were proficient in reading. Um, that, is a, that is an injustice for our country. And there is broad consensus in the research community that we have neglected best practices for teaching students how to read for many decades in this country. You know, we followed practices where students were not explicitly taught the spelling patterns in the English language, where they were encouraged to guess words based on pictures. And for many students, they could go under the radar in those early grades, you know, guessing on easier texts, yep. but they make it to the third, fourth grade and get to more complicated texts and suddenly they're identified as having reading difficulties. Um, so, you know, we often talk about in literacy instruction, this thing called the Matthew effect. It's from the Bible verse, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. When we talk, think about this literacy instruction, we're thinking about those kids who, you know, early on in the early grades get what they need to learn to read, and they start to feel confident as readers, and they read more, and they read more complex texts. And for students who struggle, it's the opposite, right? right? And we see their, you know, success uh, along the way. We have one minute. I have two questions to ask you. First, um, how, do, how, do we, how, do we, how did it get like this? Because the ramifications are so huge, number one. Number two, 22 years ago, the graduation rate for high school students in New York City was 50% when Mayor Bloomberg took, took the office as mayor. Uh, it, it went up to 82% or so, but, and, and, and the chancellor has told me this, he believes this to be true. Most of those, a lot of those kids, I won't say most, a lot of those kids are not ready for college. What happened in the meantime? We, we got more people graduating, but they're not ready for college. Yeah, I mean, as I shared, I think there's broad consensus that we haven't approached reading instruction the way we 
no, we should. And I think the city is taking bold steps this year to change that. I also think there is a big opportunity for kindergartners who entered city schools this fall to change the experience for them. Um, you know, this is a big, complicated problem, but we do know some best practices that work. Right. We know that kids have access to systematic phonics. We know they need access to knowledge-rich curriculum to build comprehension. And the city's making that investment. And I think if we can get this right for those kindergartners this fall, we can really change um, some big life outcomes for those students. The stakes here, nothing big, just the future of our country uh, and all of our children. Jetta Donovan from the New Teacher Project. Thank you for joining us. We're rooting for you because it affects all of us. Thank you so much, right. Bill. Take care. Still to come on I want to do extra time as we take a live look outside. Look at that. Beautiful. It's going to be like that for a couple of days and we're tired of all the rain and the flooding. Jeff Smith with Zachary with the forecast next.